Let us find out whether we have understood the concept of fractional index by answering some questions in exercise 3 star and let us start with number 5. Number 5 is talking of 81 raised to power 3 over 4. And this as, um, as per what we have understood in the previous examples, 4 is at the denominator and 3 is at the numerator. So we go for the fourth root of 81 after which we cube the result. Now, let us go for the fourth root of 81. What is the fourth root, rather the fourth root of 81? That is easily a three. Three cubed is what gives us, now that the fourth root of 81 is a three, three cubed is 27. And that is number five. What about number six? Number six, we have negative 125 raised to power 2 over 3. We have to be very careful here because 125 itself is a negative. And we have 2 over 3 as the index. So we have to go for the cube root of negative 125. Uh, let's see what happens there. We have to go for the cube root of... Um, um, negative 125 which is a negative 5 you have to be very careful here it is this negative 5 that we must now square to give us tw uh, positive 25 but uh, care should be taken because if you just have uh, negative 5 squared barely like that inside a calculator then you'll have negative 5 squared, you can easily get negative 25, which is not the case. So remember to put into the bracket negative 5, because even the negative itself is, 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 is squared. And you know that when a negative is multiplied by a negative number, it should give you a positive number. So that is it. Uh, number 13, 7 raised to power x is the same as the fourth root of 7, again, everything raised to power 3. And this is just a, a fractional index in reverse. Because at this position, you have to realize that 4 was at the denominator position. So 7 raised to power x is equal to 7 raised to power 3 over 4. And now that the left-hand side are equal, and the basis, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and the bases are equal. In other words, we have base 7 raised to power x and base 7 raised to power 3 over 4. It goes without saying that even the indices themselves are equal. So uh, straight away, x is equal to 3 over 4. Uh, let's now go to number 14. And number 14, we have the fifth root of 5, which is equal to 25 raised to power x. We have to take great care here. 5 at this position must have been at the denominator position. And because there is nothing here, we can't say there is nothing because there is obviously a 1. So it has to be 5 raised to power 1 over 5. Because 5 must have been at the denominator position, which is equal to 25 raised to power x. But another problem arises. Now, the two sides are equal, but the bases are not equal. So how do we make the bases equal? We have to write 25 in terms of 5. We realize that 25 by itself is actually 5 squared. And therefore, the left-hand side gives us 5 raised to power 1 over 5, is equals to 5 squared, which is itself 25, and it is this 25 that has to be raised uh, uh, by power x. And according to what we know, there's another law which states that, which states that if a is raised to power a, and then everything is raised to power b, this is the same as a raised to power 
the product of V, which is A, B. And the product of that is A, B. So when 5 is raised to the power 2 and everything is raised to the power X, then we have 5 raised to the power 2X. And now that the left-hand side is equals to the right-hand side, then the indices must automatically be equal. So it goes without saying that 2x is a fifth. And how do we go about getting x? We divide everything by 2. So by 2 here we get x. A fifth divided by 2 is the same as a fifth multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor, which is times a half. And x is easily a tenth. If you want, then you can say x is equals to uh, a fifth was originally 1 over 5, which is by itself 0 0.2 divided by divided by 2. Then we can say 1 over 10, which is 0 0.2 divided by 2, which is 0 0.1, which is the same as 1 over 10. And that is it. Thank you. And let us work together.